Hey Tim, Slash Gang, um, Philosopher Game here, and uh, we're back. And I'm playing a little bit of World of Goo this time, um, which is a great game if you guys have played it. It's uh, pretty basic, but at the same time it's really, really fun, you know, just playing with physics and just messing around. And uh, it's a bank holiday, it is the bank holiday weekend, the second in May that we have here in the UK. I don't know if it's uh, it's Sunday today, I mean if you're watching in Japan it's... Is it? Would it be Monday in Japan? I don't know how far ahead they are. Maybe I think there must be plus 12. Which would mean it's almost Sunday in Japan. Oh wait, no, it would probably be Sunday. I mean Monday in Japan. In America it's probably still Sunday. Apart from maybe in Hawaii it might still be. Anyway, I don't know. Point is, here it's Sunday. I'm playing some World of Goo. And basically the point of World of Goo is that you get these little goo balls to the little funnel and then I don't know where they go. They kind of get recycled or something. It's got a sweet little story going for it. You know, it's kind of fun. And the little goo balls, they're kind of funny. They've got eyes and stuff, and they're kind of alive, but they're not, and it's all a bit weird. But anyway, yeah, it's a great game. Part of the indie series that I'm doing. And uh, I just want to talk quickly about the difference between Aristotle and Plato. Now, I touched on this slightly earlier with my uh, channel update, the first video it did. Um, but I'm just going to jump right into this. Basically, the main difference between Plato and Aristotle is Plato is interested in the heavens, and Aristotle is interested in what's here on Earth. Um, of course, that's a pretty basic way to put it. Um, but essentially, if you could sum it up in that, that's what I would say it would be. Um, so, Plato's major works are dialogues, uh, most of them involving Socrates, who uh, was Plato's mentor, as it were, and Plato was his protege. And anyway, um, so the interesting thing about Plato is he never actually gives his own opinion. He always has a dialogue and it always comes from the mouth of someone in that dialogue. Um, so basically, we don't know, well, we can be pretty sure, but we can't be 100% sure, if Plato's dialogues are his opinion on philosophical matters. It's pretty likely that they are, but you know, that's just how that shizzy works, you know, you never know about that kind of shiz. Um, anyway, so basically his major work is The Republic, and Timaeus and Critias is a pretty major work, but other than that, I'd say, yeah, the major the major work is the Republic, which in basically he's setting out the ideal Republic, which affords to his philosophical values. And his philosophical values are pretty much the philosophers are best. Uh, there's forms and shapes, which I'll go into at another time, because... That's too big. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a background history before for this uh, series on Plato and Aristotle. But yeah, I'd say his uh, his philosophical values is that philosophers are the best. In his ideal republic, there's basically it works like a pyramid. At the top of the pyramid, the uh, government and the people in charge are what are known as the philosopher kings. So they're basically philosophers that are supposedly better than everyone else and they're in charge which sounds you know a little bit like a dictatorship to us um, certainly not a democracy by any stretch of the imagination the philosopher kings know best and while I don't want to suddenly go into why I think dictatorship I don't want to definitely I don't want to talk really about dictatorship I just want to say that you can from Plato's point of view, the best educated people should run a city-state. And they do. That's the whole idea, at least, is that they do. They run the city-state. And beneath the philosopher kings are what are known as the phulakoi, which is the Greek word for guards. And the phulakoi do exactly that. They protect the city. Um, they have a duty to protect the city. Their responsibility is to protect the city. Now, while the guards are below the philosopher kings, they can become the philosopher kings. 
it's kind of like they're handpicked from birth. Not from birth, but they're educated to eventually become philosopher kings and rule the city. But not all of the guards will make it that far, but some of them will. And beneath the guards is the workers, the general populace, the ones that no one cares about. So basically, me and you. YouTubers, I would say, you know, we're the general population, the nobodies. Yeah? Um, and basically, the city is meant to work pretty well. I mean, he writes it basically because they didn't. he didn't like Athens. Um, he, did, well, he didn't like the way that ancient Athens was going. He just he didn't like it. He preferred for things to be a little bit more organised. He wanted philosophy to be in charge, basically. And there's a word, interestingly, I should break this down, there's a... Uh, there are three types of citizens in ancient Greece. There's the Aedotes, the. Sorry, what is it? Sorry, wait, hold on, scrap that completely. Sorry, yeah, there's the Aedotes, which is those that know. Okay. There's the Idiotes, which is directly translated as those that do not know, or the uh, the private citizens, and. And that's, yeah, and well, there's the, uh, those that see as well, but I can't quite remember what that is in, uh, the Greek. But anyway, so, the idiotes is what makes up the general thing. Now, obviously we get the English word idiot. And that's not that I'm saying that all private citizens are idiots. It's certainly not what Plato's saying either. It just happens that we took the, those that do not know. Basically, they don't know about what's going on. And they just, they're the idiotes, put simply. And so they are the workmen, but also guards can be idiotes. Some of the guards could possibly be idiotes. He doesn't really go much into how, how this uh, culture can be fully organised. He talks about it a little bit, but not really. Anyway, so I've given a quick background of uh, Plato. And let's see, how does this apply to World of Goo? Um, World of Goo in the storyline spoiler alert everyone in the storyline they want to go to the moon in World of Goo so you can see how it has like a kind of platonic ideals to it they want to go to the moon they're not interested in this world they're interested in the ethereal and the things above them the other thing is is the in the theory of shapes and forms the bits of goo make shapes. They make forms of something. Together they are put together. Together they put something else together. Um, oh yeah, I realise, you know, this is... I might be reading too much into it. I don't know what the developers had in mind when they made it, but perhaps just a little bit. World of Gear has platonic values at heart. I don't think it's got Aristotelian values at heart. Um, because I think it's not grounded enough. It's very ethereal. Well, I'll write the, here this one. You'll see it at the end of this. Uh, the menu comes up. It's pretty much because I got there. And then I just realised that I oh, can't be bothered. And I got bored. That's pretty much it. But uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so I think World of Goo has platonic values in it. And... Well, I hope Plato would agree with me. I don't know. Though. I don't know what Plato's opinion of video games would be. In fact... They'd probably be that they corrupt the youth. He he was big on uh, things that corrupt the youth, especially like he didn't like poetry. He made a big attack on poetry because apparently that one corrupts the youth. I don't know. I've not really got an opinion on that one, but hey, sometimes it does. Anyway, um, I think that's probably probably running out of time here. Um, what I will just say really quickly is, uh, if you haven't played World of Goo, I seriously recommend you do. Uh, Really, really good game. Um, it's not just on Wii, it's also on PC. I'm actually playing on PC here. And, um, yeah, it's a great game. Anyway, uh, keep philosophizing, keep thinking, and I'll uh, see you all next time. Peace out. Ciao.